And I'll go through this briefly, but it's talking about a guy who took on eight credit cards to buy Bitcoin. And this is kind of his story of what happened, four month update. So it says, here's a four month update on how maxing out eight credit cards is going at a high level. You can check out the image of the spreadsheet where I'm tracking it for full details, blah, blah, blah. But here's the high level stat. So the total amount of Bitcoin that he bought with his eight maxed out credit card is 1.4488 Bitcoin. Great number. The average price of that Bitcoin is $37,443. The total credit card debt accrued so far, $54,000. The minimum payment every month is $542. The unrealized profits are currently sitting at 47793 10% since February 29th. So that is pretty incredible. He also says all this debt will be rolled into my new credit cards in May 2025 into the new 18, 20 month, 21 month term at 0%. <clears throat> so very interesting strategy. You can see if you want, you can check out his spreadsheet here that shows all of his purchases cost base, the minimum payment, where all these numbers came from. But that is a very interesting strategy. I would definitely not, definitely not advise anybody out there to do that. I think that is, inc I, I think it's incredibly foolish to do. Even though, you know, he's up $47,000 right now, it seems like a, he seems like a genius. But you're playing with fire there. And I mean, it really depends on how much your risk factor is there. For me personally, I would never even consider that. I would consider taking on a line of credit if you can get access to one for like a five, six, seven percent rate. Buy some Bitcoin with that or refinancing your house. Uh, it's my opinion that I don't think the housing prices are going to continue to rise. There's, it's just not possible. Uh, the rates aren't going to come down for a while. Interest versus any sort of principal here in Canada. And there'll be much less buyers. And especially in these next couple of years, as people's terms are, are coming to an end. It's a little bit different. In the States, you got 30-year mortgages. In Canada, I think the maximum is five-year mortgages. So in terms of like the banks and covering their ass, five-year rates make a lot more sense. That's why there's always so much trouble within the States versus Canada. But in terms of the consumer taking on that debt, if I could lock in a 30-year mortgage right now for 5%, I would without a, without a doubt. So you kind of have to figure out, but at the same time, if, if you're in Canada and your interest rate is like 2 3% right now, and you're going to refinance it to 6%, buy Bitcoin. I mean, you really have to look at the, the trade-off there. You're going to be paying more of an interest rate, but you're going to be able to buy Bitcoin at prices, which I don't think we'll ever see again. So if you can manage that properly, I do think that there is some sort of arbitrage there that can be done. And that's essentially what Michael Saylor is doing right now. He's getting a much lower rate. He's taking on much more capital, but that's the exact same rate that Saylor's taking on. He's, he's, he's taking on debt, cheap debt, in fiat land, which is all debt, and he's buying Bitcoin with it. So, if you want to uh, replicate the sailor in your own life, that's I wouldn't do it with credit card. I mean, it's it's tough to tell anybody to go into debt. It really depends what you have going on in your life. But that is something that if you are have some stomach for risk and want to get more Bitcoin, I don't hate that strategy.